You ready? There's a, um, a package of documentation that come with upon what you buy. The first of those documents is this device is intended for legal purposes only. Amongst those are aromatherapy and perfuming, uh, extraction of uh, um, uh, flavonoids and um, terpenes for flavor enhancement, those that are capable of growing tobacco, um, uh, extraction of tobacco um, for essential oils for vaporizing for e-cig devices, um, and for those that are lucky enough to live in medical states um, where it's um, legally to do so, you can extract uh, cannabis for medical purposes. And, um, that comes with each device. You want to consider, no matter what you're doing, that safety comes first. Please note that the misapplication of these products can cause very serious damage to person and or property. We'll gladly assist you in application questions, but advise that the ultimate uh, application of these products is the responsibility of the end, of, end user, and we do not accept responsibility for damages caused by mi misapplications of kits provided by specialized formulations. That comes with every unit. Additionally, um, with each unit comes these assembly instructions for the base unit, as well as the parts list. So, um, each of the um, pages goes through various portions of the assembly, so that comes with it as well. If you have the ultimate solution, you also get um, the um, uh, Lexon lid kit um, with it. Each kit also comes with uh, an operating schematic for the entire system. As well as um, safety considerations, things that you should think about, um, what's going on in your neighborhood, in the alley behind your house or in the neighbor's yard next door, things you may or may not have thought about that you should consider whenever you're operating this device. Please read these, um, particularly this uh, um, document thoroughly. At least the operating instructions for the Mark III Turpinator. Um, and you note that um, marked in capital letters under operating instructions, pressure. It's the only time really that I truly consider this machine dangerous. So always want to make sure that um, you're at least um, at zero pressure um, or vacuum before opening this machine. All of these documents come with your machines. My name is Carla, Eloquent Solution Online, and um, I'm bringing you here the Mark III Turpinator, and over here to uh, the left of the Turpinator um, is the Transforminator. And the whole reason for the Transforminator comes from uh, a historical background of working with um, Honeywell. Uh, when I graduated from college, uh, what asked me about Honeywell was the fact that they um, pledged to their customers to leave no one behind technologically. What that meant to uh, the customer is if they purchased a control system, I worked for building control uh, division, um, if they purchased a control system from Honeywell today and um, expanded um, transformed, upgraded their building in any way, or added to it, um, or multiple uh, um, sites, that when you installed your new Honeywell system, we guaranteed that um, it would talk to your old Honeywell system, and that way you would never um, antiquate your older buildings, that we would always uh, bring them up to technology. And so when we started working with the MARV 3s, a skunk farm, one of the things that um, I saw was that the future um, um, equipment that we designed uh, could integrate the old. And um, we did that um, as much as possible by using the same components, but um, those people stepping into large-scale production um, didn't necessarily want to start um, or need to start with the smaller system except for training. Um, and therefore, these smaller systems kind of got left behind. But pulling in the old Honeywell the well theory of we will leave no one behind, um, um, I started working on uh, a way to transform the Mark III into a system that would accommodate whatever size column 
that you choose. Over here to, to uh, your left, you'll see a four by three foot column. And the reason for being able to accommodate that easily is primarily this um, flex hose. By doing that, we can make the column shorter, longer, fatter, wider, skinny, as you pick, such that you're not telling your customers, um, bring me X amount of, of, of lavender or whatever material you're extracting. Um, they can bring you whatever amount of material they have and you can extract uh, the large volumes in the larger columns but when you get to the end you might want to use a smaller column. I should have brought those smaller columns out here but I didn't. Um, we'll bring some of those for you to look at uh, a little later on. Um, as a matter of fact I think we have recorded somewhere also um, pictures of the various columns that you could clamp onto the transforminator. But as it sits right now, that four and a half by three foot column, no way is that volume going to fit into that tiny little spool. Even if you stacked those spools, it's not going to fit that volume into that spool. So um, a, a really easy way to accommodate that limitation um, was to um, um, adapt a, a lid for a larger spool to clamp the bottom of the six inch spool to the top of uh, the larger spool. And here we have um, a 12 by 12 spool with a six inch ferrule um, welded onto the top of it. Um, and that ac accommodates um, the bottom of this spool being clamped onto the top. Now you can run any size column you wish and not be limited by the volume of your capture chamber. So, the question is, how do you get from here to here? And it's really a pretty uh, simple process of just um, adapting uh, some pieces here and there to accommodate what you need. So, we're going to start by removing um, this overflow tube. Maybe we're going to start by removing it. Tie tight and bleed down. Or maybe am I going the wrong direction? No, I'm not. We're going to remove these two. Uh, oh, crap. There we go. We're going to remove these two um, compression fittings because we're going to be using the overflow, so we're no longer going to be using me. So our first changes are going to be to these two outside um, stacks, and so I'm going to remove this inside stack to make working with the outside stacks a little bit easier. So drop that clamp and remove the stack. So first thing we're going to do is bend And this um, 45, or put this 45 in here to bend your overflow out such that it can, it can accommodate the um, sight glass that we're about to add. So I put that 45 in, and now I'm reinstalling the um, reinstalling the um, uh, valve, and then we're going to need to put in these end cap with MPTs in it such that we can accommodate the sight glass that's going in. Our 
sight glass in. And by the way, you have to be careful when you're doing uh, working with these sight glasses. You want to make sure that the typical silicon seal that's in there has been removed and been replaced by a Viton seal, which um, will not leach onto your product. So now we're putting the second uh, end cap by MPT on, such that we can put our second valve on. The reason for double valving these sight glasses is such that if you do have a failure, and you have to remember that these sight glasses will not um, handle the pressure that your stainless will, so you've got to be careful when you're working with these kinds of pressures. So now with that sight glass installed, and we can now, with a the, with the nipple here, we can now install our other ball valve. And so what this gives you the ability to do is if you have an overpressure situation, you know, you're approaching 100 pounds of pressure by some error, um, that you can close these valves and um, save your sight glass or eliminate your sight glass. Or if you do have failure, you can eliminate the spill of butane into the atmosphere around you, thus um, saving yourself potential danger and explosion. Um, so that is, th that's the structure of our overflow um, um, column. And now we're going to work just um, ever so at a, a few adaptations again to um, uh, this gas stack by and adding in an additional 45 on this side as well such that we can pull the function of these gauges away from the main stack, making it a little bit easier to use your valves. Well, this one's always a little bit tougher just because you've got all this stuff on the stack. On, um, um, with the gas staff back on, we need to start the assembly um, reconstruction of our um, center stack by adding um, another sight glass in the center. So we have a sight glass to watch the overflow and the condition of the material once it um, uh, passes through the column from the bottom up. And now we want to have a sight glass to see the condition of the, of the um, oil with the butane when we're dropping the um, contents of the, cap or the, of the column into the capture chamber from above. So, I've removed the top portion of the stack, and I'm going to add a sight glass right here on top of this valve. Add another Viton seal, the sight glass. Once again, the sight glass has had the silicon seals, which are typically installed on all the sight glasses, replaced with the black Viton seal. For anybody who's interested, I have those seals available. Okay, some tight on your tri-clamp. And the next thing we want to do is add another, another valve on the top of this sight glass such that once again we've protected ourselves from any breakage. If that sight glass breaks, we can valve it off from the, both the top and the bottom and we will lose no butane into the atmosphere. Anything that can possibly explode and hurt us or those around us. So we add our Viton seal and our second clamp or our second uh, valve and our second clamp. Finger tight that clamp. And now we're going to add, oops, now we're 
we're going to add our um, our dual injection port concentric reducer. We're going to replace the single port concentric reducer. And that will go right there. Can we break? The old concentric reducer with a single injection port to a new concentric reducer with a dual injection port. And that's important exactly how you locate these injection ports because we are going to be um, combining those with the overflow um, in the change to the biflow from the, the flooding trend or the flooding mark three. So here we're going to go ahead and clamp on this new dual injection port and we might need to adjust its location a little bit for the benefit of the entire machine. Okay, we used to just inject butane into one of our, um, into the single injection port. That was how we brought, introduced butane into the system. In this situation, we're um, going to be doing two things here. We're going to be injecting butane into the system as well as using this second injection port to pull a vacuum on the system. As you can recall, before we used to pull our vacuum down here, at this point in time, how about, to be where we have the opportunity to change this valve out such that we have two 3 8 inch valves and we can have two recycle pumps on this system to speed it up if you so desire. Or you can leave the quarter inch valve on and use it for um, your pressure and vacuum release for the system. You choose what you want to do. Okay, up here on this injection port um, we're going to want a valve for um, a valve for the uh, for the um, vacuum pump, and we're going to want to put a valve on for the for the uh, injection of the uh, liquid butane for extraction. I'm going to take the nipple that used to be on that injection port, remove it, and add uh, this six inch nipple, thread it, and a T. Let me turn this around so that you can see what I'm doing more readily. Then we're going to, can you stop right here? Um, assembly, added assembly, is what's really transforming this machine into something that's different, a biflow system. So here I'm adding a second, or a second, multiple, I'm adding one more ball valve. Can you stop and let me screw this in? Our second quarter inch ball valve. And what this ball valve is going to do is allow us to um, uh, inject liquid butane into the overflow tube. And um, if you close this overflow valve, the butane will then go to the top of the overflow tube and you will have a top to bottom flush with your butane in opposition to the typical bottom to top that the Mark III normally does. So now your bottom to top, top to bottom. Your next run, bottom to top, top to bottom. That um, uh, um, shear force, that shear factor, aids in the efficiency of your extraction. So that's the purpose of this. Now in order to combine these two um, ports, we're going to need to add a second um, uh, T at the top of this valve, which is what we're going to do right now. And 
Now all we have to do is add this small piece of one foot, a quarter inch hose, one foot long. And this is the, the um, hose that uh, is PTFE lined, stainless hose. And we attach that here and here. And now all we need to do is make some final adjustments on our overflow column, or on our column for the overflow portion, which will include adding um, an upside down concentric reducer now to in, um, inject butane into your system from the top. And the injection port, instead of use, be, using that injection port for injection, you're going to be using that to um, keep track of your um, system, systemic pressure in the upper portions of your, in your upper chambers. So here we go. We're going to take the um, inch 120 mesh screen and we're going to put the column on top of that and our last clamp to hold it down. to the system is your end cap by MPT that goes on the top. That's where your overflow is going to happen as well as, oops, as well as MPT or this nipple and a 90, a quarter inch 90 on the top. Your clamp. And there's no specific way that you need to clamp these. It's just that my right hand's way stronger than my left, so I always clamp it such that I can easily. Um, well, how would you know? What's, how do you know what's too tight? Um, too tight. Clamp it. Um, twist it down as far as you can for finger tight. Um, you don't want to put uh, um, tools to it. You don't want to clamp it down too tight. And if, if you just do it finger tight, that's fine. It allows for the gasket to have expansion on it. If you if you take a tool and and stick it through here and, and wedge it down. Then you're compressing the viton really tight and then it gets memory for that tightness so you don't have the actual function of the seal if you tighten it down too snug. Okay. So now um, at this point, uh, flare in up here. Well, I'm going to move this ever so slightly because we're going to have a little bit of, of issue with interference between here and here. So um, from that point we're going to take our hose, our overflow hose, and we can install that. And it just goes from here things that we're missing at this point in time are <laughs> our gauges. So we're going to want to put one gauge 
up here at the top on this concentric reducer such that you will have knowledge of the column pressure at all times because with this system and these sight glasses um, and the sight glasses being made of glass as the name suggests don't handle the pressures that stainless steel does so you want to keep track of what those pressures are doing such that you don't get too much pressure that will break those sight glasses. Can you pause this again for a minute, please? Gauge, once we get, and I twisted it off again, I can't believe it. Um, once we get this 90 and as well. Additionally, you're going to have one more gauge right down here at the bottom. And can you pause one more time? I need one more piece. I'm missing this nipple and the 90 to our gaseous column such that we can install the last of our gauges. You can always leave your nipple on here and install this with a, a hose, but um, um, nice and neat and tidy and all stacked together is nice too. So um, I use the hose because I have multiple machines and I don't have as many gauges as I have machines, so I'm always moving them around. But now here you are. You've now transformed your Mark III into a machine that just by changing these tri-clamps out and um, putting in adapters for you can run any size column you want. All we have to do is just clamp onto the top of this three by or this um, 12 by 12 column. All you have to do is remove the bottom part of um, the bottom clamp off your transforminator plate, stack it on here, clamp it on, and you're ready to go. I'm going to right now see if I can't move this. This is pretty big. Move it to here, clamp it on, meet the transforminator.